Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday the 24th of December 2021. In today's Millwall news we have two interviews with members of the Millwall squad. We have two players that we've been linked with from a certain clickbait site. Uh, you can decide what that means and then um, we've got news of an, another loan. So let's have a look at this first. This is from londonnewsonline.co.uk and it's Sean Hutchinson saying... Uh, Letting everyone know what it's like to be in a football club that's experiencing a COVID outbreak. So let's have a read of this. It's constant uncertainty. Mill will defend the Sean Hutchinson on training and playing in a fresh COVID-19 flare-up. Mill will defend the Sean Hutchinson has admitted that the latest aggressive spread of COVID-19 has made playing football a whole lot more unpredictable. The Lions had an outbreak last week. Last week which postponed that their home game against Preston North End on Saturday. The domestic football fixture list was heavily disrupted by the virus, with the Omicron strain significantly more contagious. Some of Mill's squad resumed training at their Calman Road base on Monday with the site shut down last week to try and limit infection. Hutchinson 31 said, It's strange because you're going into training and every day someone else is having to miss out because they've tested positive. You're thinking, is the game at the weekend on? Are the, are the fans going to be there? There is that constant uncertainty, which is not nice as players. Normally, you've got that bit of a routine. You're looking forward to the match and training. It's a different challenge and a difficult challenge for us all. I'm sure the manager is probably scratching his head. You can have everything planned and ready. And then on Friday morning, you can be missing three of your starters. Every team is dealing with the same issues. It's who you can manoeuvre their way through it the best. You've got to do what you can as a club and then as players be as cautious as you can. I know they are trying their hardest to keep the games flowing. We've got to take every day as it comes. You're going in every morning to be tested and wondering if you're going to be available for the weekend. It's hard to get yourself fully focused when there's so much uncertainty. It's a challenge on its own. You never know what the next day is going to hold. At the start of the season we were all excited to get going again. We were buzzing that the fans were back and the love for football felt like it was back again. It felt like we had turned a corner, but I suppose, at the back of our minds, we didn't know what the future held with this thing. Personally, because I and any and anyone close to me has not been affected by it too much, I would like to continue. I'm not particularly worried about the health side of continuing, but those making the decisions have a lot more information than I do. It seems up and down the country there are big amounts of players who are testing positive. People at the club are coming back from COVID. People are leaving due to COVID. I could go in at the end of this week and be positive. It's almost a bit comical. It doesn't quite seem right or fair. Being a manager and winning games is hard enough without having this thrown at you every day. Gary Rowett probably won't know his full selection until 1.30 for a 3pm game when all the tests have been done and people get their go-ahead. A lot of things can change until then. Scotland's government have imposed a 500 capacity limit on sport from Boxing Day, with even more stringent measures in Wales from the same day ensuring no access for supporters. There have been rumblings since last week that English football was set to head back behind closed doors as it was for the entire 2021 campaign. That is just a huge shame, said Hutchinson, who's also had spells at Fulham and Motherwell. There have been lots of good days out and a, a, a lot of good memories from fans in cup matches and performances in other games. It looks like the writing is on the wall and that, and that is where we're heading. We should all be quite experienced at performing in those situations because we've experienced it. It's not the football that we've grown up to love or how we want it to be done, but needs must. If that's what it takes to get the fixtures done in time, I'm sure that's in the back of their minds. Mill had produced inconsistent displays just prior to the Preston match and Hutchison was left particularly disappointed with their showing in a 2-1 loss at Peterborough. It's the lowest I've felt in a long time coming off the pitch in a Mill shirt, he said. It's definitely the worst I've seen us perform by a long way. We certainly need to bounce back and we certainly uh, we normally do bounce back well. It was a really, really, really poor showing by, by a lot of us. We had done everything right in the build-up and there was a massive following. It wasn't like there was no atmosphere, it was a great atmosphere. It's been quite a roller coaster start to the season. There's been times when we've been winning games and I'm thinking 
we've got a good chance at the playoffs then you get games like Peterborough that hit you hard we're supposed to be that team pushing for the playoffs and then we perform like that it's nowhere near good enough then we probably play our, our next game and win 2-0 it's been very inconsistent if you showed the table it looks like it has been decent not bad but when you've experienced the opportunities we've had in games that we've thrown away it's made them more frustrating to start to the season if we can find a little more consistency we can really push on indeed sean indeed let's do that and like i said in previous videos stop worrying about the playoffs just focus on the next game take it game by game and stop worrying oh if we win this we'll, we'll get into the playoffs it'll get us close to the playoffs don't worry about the playoffs you worry about game by game and then the playoffs will come that's how it goes uh, also we have this from Billy Mitchell now he was speaking to the news at Den so what did he say so Mill midfielder discusses how this season beats last as he's on course to achieve targets for someone who's raised the eyebrows of Mill's coaching and fitness staff with some of his lockdown runs you can imagine how frustrated Billy Mitchell has been cooped up at home for 10 days Mitchell was one of the Lions players who tested positive for COVID-19 last week. As of Monday afternoon, Mitchell was still in self-isolation and limited to training with weights and whatever he could do in his back garden. Trampoline? Climbing trees? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's safe to say that didn't involve a 15k and run. That was the figure he posted on the Strava app used by the squad and Mill staff last year before football resumed and players were getting their runs in at local parks or on the streets. That long run caught the attention of Boss Gary Rant and the sports scientist who had to tell Mitchell to ease it up a little bit. Mitchell was one of the players who tested positive a year ago when there was an outbreak in the camp causing festive games against Bournemouth and Watford to be postponed. When Mill played commentary in the next game there was an obvious lack of energy. Players who didn't uh, test positive in the most recent outbreak returned on Monday to the training ground, which was shut last week as the club took measures to stop the spread. Mitchell was speaking to News at Den this week before it was confirmed that the Swansea game on Boxing Day was postponed. I had, no, I, <clears throat> I had no symptoms whatsoever. I've been double vaccinated and I had COVID around this time last year, Mitchell said. With all the culmination of those two things, this time around, I've no symptoms to speak of and I don't feel ill at all. On one hand, that's good, but on the other hand, having to isolate when you don't feel ill is quite frustrating. Perhaps the only thing I could say both times around was a little bit of extra fatigue, but football being a physical job, sometimes it's hard to discern the difference between what's just normally being tired and COVID tired, if that makes sense. I know if you have any symptoms, you obviously take a test to protect your teammates, staff and so on, but when you don't have any symptoms, it's quite a hard one to catch, to be honest. It seems like to hit everyone differently. A few of the lads have felt really ill, whereas some have felt absolutely fine. Uh, the sports science team sent me through a home program with strength circuits and high intensity interval training. I've got a small garden and a set of weights and dumbbells and stuff which I've been using. But obviously when you're isolating, you're not allowed to, out to do any running. So I'm going to have to wait to do, to do that to the end before I can do anything proper. I'm not going to lie, the first few days not being able to run wasn't nice. And after a while, you feel very homebound and quite frustrated. There are only so many Christmas movies you can watch or songs you can listen to. Mitchell is a popular member of the squad, and Matt Smith recently said he's often on the receiving end of dreaded footballer banter, but in a good way. Making friendships in the dressing room is something Mitchell thinks is key. Ah, oh, big time. You see it each and every single day, probably more than your family's, Mitchell said. Uh, you have to make an effort to form some good relationships. It's important that the lads take it upon themselves because it's quite easy to go to training, go back home and live your own lives. Sometimes it depends how you're playing as well, how you take the banter. If you're in a rich frame of form, then you're going to accept people taking the piss at you. Whereas if you're not playing well, sometimes it gets your back up. In general, I know a lot of people have said it, I think our training ground is pretty good and certainly have a lot of good friends there. Prior to COVID, before it became a massive thing, quite a few, often a few of us would go to dinner with each other, get a healthy pre-match meal on the night prior to our game or even during a week. But now, obviously, with all the restrictions and things, that's gone gone away a little. Uh, also now, a lot of the lads have had children, so it seems like their home lives have become a lot busier. We've got a lot less uh, single lads who don't have kids, so that's not something we really, really do anymore. 
How about you have like um, the kids are all the same age, right? You have like a play date kind of thing. You can still do that, but you have to bring your kids. Uh, Mitchell has played every minute of Mill's last nine games, a run that would have been broken had the game against Preston gone ahead last Saturday, and he would has he would have been self isolating. He's made 21 appearances this campaign, already a career high number in his fourth season in senior football. So there you go. Uh, Billy Mitchell interview there for the News at Den, and oh, it continues. Uh, I, I had those goals set at the beginning of last season, but it didn't quite work out. This season, it's certainly going to plan, Mitchell said. To be honest, I was quite frustrated and nervous when I got a positive COVID result because I thought it was going to end up missing potentially a few games. Obviously, you want your teammates to play, play well, but at the same time, if someone steps into your position and plays well, then you could be out of the team for, for however many number of weeks. The game was cancelled, which on a personal note, I'm pleased about, though not, not with the general situation. If I can continue to make as many appearances as I can this season, I think it's going to be well for the future. Indeed, indeed. Billy Mitchell playing very well this season. Um, getting better and better. Um, not out of his depth um, at all in this league. Doing quite well. And uh, so he pushes on and keeps going. So, I told you we were linked with a few, um, a couple of strikers. So here you go. This is from footballleagueworld.co.uk and they say, here we go, this is one of the, they always do this, they throw our name in, in, um, in like a whole ream of clubs. I think they're just trying to get all us, me all fans looking at this, their page and to get some of their ads up, so. Sources. Ipswich Town, Millwall. Sheffield Wednesday and Rotherham among clubs eyeing 27 year old indeed now what's what's the odd one out amongst those clubs all of them are league one clubs except for Millwall so there you go Sporting Gijon striker Euro Djordovic is attracting attention from Barnsley, Ipswich Town, Millwall, Rotherham United and Sheffield Wednesday ahead of January transfer window Sources have exclusively informed Football League World. The Montenegro international has followed up his 22 goals in La Liga uh, 2 last season with 7 in 18 for Sporting Gijon this term. Uh, the striker scored goals across Europe featuring sides in the Netherlands, Serbia, Italy and Greece before moving to Spain where it is thought that his physical style of play would make him a very good fit for English football. Sources have informed Football League well that the clubs we've just mentioned um, are all interested in Djurdovic, who has been offered to a number of different English clubs. Uh, Football League World understands that Sport and Gijon are keen to keep hold of the 27 year old whose current deal runs out in 2023, but a Spanish club would find it hard to resist any reasonable offers for him. Signing a confident and consistent goal scorer is likely to be top on many EFL clubs' list of priorities, which could make Djurdovic an attractive prospect with the transfer market opens. Okay, uh, you have a number of contradictions there. Uh, they say he's been offered to a number of different English clubs. Who's offering him? Because it says in the next fucking paragraph, Sport and Gijon are keen to hold on to him. So, who is offering him around? The agent? They're trying to force a move? Is he, I don't know, that's weird. Or Sporting Gijon are offering him around. And seeing how much they could get for him. And then, because uh, I know next season is the last year of his contract, he's going to be... They won't get nothing for him. And Spanish football is in... Very, very, very um, not good situation at the moment. I don't know if you've seen Barcelona absolutely decimated. Uh, they are very, very poor. So let's have a look at this geezer here. So he's 27 years old. He's born in Serbia, but he plays for Montenegro. Um, so you can see here. If this comes up. No, it doesn't come up. There's nothing to display there. Okay, so he has this season 
Started 16 games, come on as a sub once and scored 6 goals, got 6 yellow cards. For some reason they don't give a rating, uh, they don't follow this lead too much. Now here's the thing, so strengths, headed attempts. But then they say weaknesses, aerial duels. So he scores with his head, but not when there's a defender defending in the air. So he runs on to high crosses and scores with his head, but he can't jump up standing start against a defender. And also we're very weak holding on to the ball. That's going to be great when when we pump it along to him and then he just uh, he just hits him and goes out of play. That would be brilliant. Um, you can see here's four of the goals he scored so far this season. This only goes back to October, the latest matches. You can see he scored in the latest game against Ibiza. Oh, nice. Um, he generally plays 90 minutes. There was one game where he played 28. I think he started and got uh, got injured, I'm not too sure. Um, so there you go. And here you go, here's his uh, history. Um, so this season, uh, these are the different clubs he's played for. Um, 51, game, 51 appearances in total. He's played six times for Montenegro. Um, not hasn't scored for them yet. He's got a couple of games for Paloma, but you can see he didn't start many. So in 2014-15, he started one game, and came on as a sub 17 times and got one goal. So he got one goal in 305 minutes. Uh, and then you see for Palermo, he got two goals in 474 minutes, 473 minutes. Um, didn't get any goals for Olimpo Yarkos. But his passing is very good for them, 83.3 over two starts and three sub appearances. So that's probably skewed skewed by how little time minutes he had on the pitch, 207. The less time you have on the pitch, the more likely you are to um, have a higher pass accuracy because you're probably taking less passes. So there you go. Um, shall we... Let's see if it'll work on this. I'm probably probably won't. No, I didn't do anything. Um, okay. Now let's have a look. This is from Sofa Score, and you can see. So he's not very tall. He's 182 centimeters high, which I think is about five foot um, nine or ten. Um, so weaknesses: ball control and passing. Fantastic. Here's his heat map for the season. Uh huh, and you can see uh, minutes per game 86. Uh, so we've got goals six. That's so far this season 243 uh, minutes per goal. Um, he's missed eight big chances, whatever that means. Uh, is that high? I don't know what to compare that to, but goal conversion basically shots, shots he he's, uh, takes. The, goes in so if he has 10 shots he'll get one goal according to this and he scored six goals from inside the box so is it another Tom Bradshaw goals from outside the box Bupkus nada two headed goals four right foot goals uh, one assist uh, his passing is not very good, it's just decent for a striker, but uh, he's probably surrounded by a couple of defenders at least on him. Um, if we look on the left hand side to go here, uh, summary for the last 12 months, that section. La Liga, 37 appearances, 6.98, so that's over the last year, December to December I believe, because it goes uh, January, February, March, April, so it's going over there. The, December to December and he didn't have a good November and he got injured so World Cup qualify got, he got a rating of 6.54 Copa del Rey 7.35 so against lesser teams in Spain he's uh, really shining um, gets 6 yellow cards and he cost Sporting Gijon 2.5 million euros 
and that was in 2018 so are they just trying to get some of that money back now I doubt we'll we'll be paying any anything anywhere near that um, now what you got to think about here is the exchange rate as well now I don't know if it's gone up or down or what's happening um, I know the Bank of England put the interest rates up uh, I think that strengthens the pound which probably gives us more buying ability uh, it means we can buy more euros I believe so maybe that's why we're being linked with uh, foreign players we get a bit more bang for our buck but as we've known buying foreign players has not worked out well for Millwall we've got the two Russians we've got Bob Peters we've got Barry Powell uh, we did have Christoph Kine. Uh he was uh, quite a quite a character and a very good player very skillful but not very productive no offence Christoph um, um, in terms of foreigners who do well for, for Millwall I would say it's probably uh, Australians to, to be honest with you maybe even Americans um, you obviously got Casey Keller and uh, about other Americans as well uh, but mostly Australians so if there's any decent Australian players want to come to Millwall uh, apparently it might be easier for them to get a visa now well, that's another thing what with what what have us been out of the EU now don't I don't think Montenegro are actually in the EU I think they want to be in the EU that's probably why they split from Serbia amongst other things but they're not in the EU now is that helpful for us is it not helpful for us um, I don't think you know, it's gonna need a work permit and there are actually criteria in place uh, I was looking at them uh, in the summer um, I think it depends on how well Montenegro are in the FIFA rankings as the basically top level top level countries medium level countries and the rest and if you're a striker who regularly plays for a top level country basically you can, you can get a work permit no problem if you're not if you're in that second grade or even lower you need to jump through a lot more hurdles to get a work permit so I'm looking at him now I don't think he's it's going to be touch and go if he can get a work permit to be honest with you because they're probably going to say, "Well, he's not. He's no better than an uh, English player that you can sign. So why are you trying to sign him and bring him into this country? We have uh, English players who can do the same job, but they cost a hell of a lot more. So what are you going to do? We ain't. We're not made of money. Um. So there you go. This is Euros Djurovic. Um." just an average striker that we've been linked with by football league world now there is another there is another and it's this one and again you can see the ram the the just total mix of football clubs who, who they throw us in with i think they're just trying to get us to, to click on this news story because we're mill fans and they know that mill fans are very active on the internet and we'll look at this story and we'll go on this website and see the adverts and boost their numbers make them some money so what do they say here so Millwall Middlesbrough Sheffield Wednesday and Sunderland among clubs eyeing 14 goal striker 14 goals that's a lot of goals isn't it Enfield Town striker Mohamedou Far has turned heads in the AFL after his impressive start to the season with Barnsley, Millwall, Middlesbrough, Ipswich Town, Sheffield Wednesday and Sunderland all having scouted him. Football League World can exclusively reveal the 24-year-old has been in its outstanding form for the Istmian League Premier Division club, scoring 14 goals in 18 games since rejoining from Bolton Wanderers in the summer. Far has spent most of his career in non-league football but secured a move to EFL Bolton in January 2020 after scoring 24 goals in 25 appearances for Enfield in the first half of the 2019-20 campaign. 
Things didn't work out for him with the Trotters, but having returned to the London club, he looks to be back to his best and his stunning start to the season may earn him another chance in the Football League. Football League World can exclusively reveal that a host of EFL clubs are flocking to scout the informed forward. Football League World understands that Barnsley, Willsborough, Browra, Ipswich, Wednesday and Sunderland have all made checks on him this season. Yes, you've already said that. Uh, Fowles' goals have helped Enfield to climb to third in the table, the seventh tier of the English football period, with games in hand over the teams above them. Um, now, this is a bit weird, to be honest here. Um, I don't know this guy. I, I don't know. Enf Enfield Town is different from Enfield. Apparently, they're a breakaway team. Um... But so he was at Enfield, scored a, scored a ton of goals, and then went to Bolton. I don't think he did anything at Bolton. And now he's gone back to Enfield Town. Um, don't know why. Did Bolton, Bolton, did they go into administration in the end? Maybe that he was able to just get out of his contract. Maybe they didn't pay him. And he could just leave, so he left. Maybe there's, it's not footballing re reasons that he didn't work out for him at Bolton. To be honest, to be fair to to him, I don't know. But he's went back to Enfield Town to to just start still scoring goals again, which is weird. Now, it seems he's in a rush. Um, don't know how old he is. Is he? Is he? Um, oh, he's twenty four year old. So he he's getting there. He's probably got three or four seasons until he eats, hits his peak. Um, and he seems to not want... He seems to just want to um, jump right in, which when you're playing in seventh tier, um, maybe you should pl jump up a few leagues and sign for a National League team and do it for them rather than just try and jump into the Premier uh, try jump into League One or even a championship. Now that's a massive jump from the Isthmian League Premier Division. And if you don't know what it is, that's old money Ryman's League. So Ryman's Premier to jump to, to League One or even to jump to Championship. That is a massive jump. That really is. Now I don't know why he went back to Enfield Town and with the situation that he was in, he's scoring so many goals. There must have been a team higher up that was more interested in him. He he couldn't go to them. Like even in in the North London Enfield area, there, there are clubs in uh, that area in the, the National League. I think Wiltstone are in the league. Um, St Albans. I don't know if they're in. Maybe they're in the league below. Uh, National League South. I don't know. But why he's, he's trying to jump up to the league before doing uh, a bit more in a few leagues up, I don't know. But let's have a look anyway. So this is from ismian.co.uk, it's their stats. And he, you can see he's the top scorer in, uh, or he's the second top scorer uh, in the league. He scored 18 goals, he scored 14 goals and 4 pen penalties. So he's banging them in, but uh, it's a seventh. T it's a seventh tier, you know. It's if he can do it there, I don't know why he doesn't jump up a couple of leagues and do his. It's still in non-league in the national league, and do it there. Um, prove yourself in that that league because some decent uh, players come come out of that league for us, League Gregory. Scott, um, Scott, Steve Morrison. Um, yeah. Um, and even uh, other players like Jamie Vardy. Um, so if you can do it in the National League, prove yourself in that league before trying to get into the actual football league. I don't know. That seems a weird one. Again, it's, it's clickbait and stuff. So there you go. And we're going to finish up with this. This is from millfc.co.uk. 
Uh, Arthur Penny extends his loan of Wellin. Uh, another 28 days for the defender. And they say he's extending his loan of Wellin United until mid January 2022. The defender of regular for Mill 123 side has impressed the Parkview Road and will now continue his development in Kent into his Welling in Kent. Well, I guess it's DA postcode, I think. I guess it technically is. Uh, into the new year. Find out how Penny has been getting on with the wings in millfc.co.uk's regular loan watch features. Or maybe just go down there. I think they got Dudley Jamlet on Boxing Day. I told you that the other, the other day in the video. Uh, I don't know if it's still on. Maybe they, they got hit by COVID. No, uh, maybe they did get hit by COVID. Um, I'm not too sure, but check it. But if Mill aren't playing, uh, check out Welling United. Check out. And a number of the other non-league teams and see see how they're getting on. If you want your football fix, uh, that's where you're gonna have to go. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.